Hello, 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 hello! It's me, Diogen Z, and Chi as well. And today, we are not yet leaving Phoenix City. I know you thought that, although the water was pretty, and the Colosseum was not accessible to us, that maybe this place was done for, and we would have went to Pyrite, but there is one more thing we can do. This place has somewhat of a pseudo-gym going on here, and Justy is its owner. Once more, I do not know if Justy is a girl or, or a man, I, I just am not sure. Sometimes you can't tell with anime characters, especially... Well, I'm not gonna go there. But let's just say I had a friend in the cosplay once who showed me a man who looked like a woman, and I still can't believe to this day that the gender is as such. But, gender bender confusion aside, this pseudo-gym is great for earning experience points. Colosseum is major on the Pokemon battles, and everyone you get into will be a double battle. Unless you go into the options on the menu screen and choose a single battle with yourself to a specific set of Colosseum options, but that is alternative from the main story, and I doubt that I'll be doing much of that because, trust me, we'll have plenty of battles. And what's great about the double battles, especially being brought out in the third gen, since third gen, you know, it's it's sort of like with black and white, how the first set of games, they had triple battles, they had rotation battles in the main story, but they didn't have them nearly enough to try out the mechanic in different ways with just a single player mode. And in the same sort of way, the third gen did this with double battles on the GBA series. But that's all rectified here when you want to try any type of battle simulation because later on you'll be able to bring over any Pokemon you used on your cartridge on this simulator. So you'll be able to get into plenty of battles. Hundreds of battles if you really desire that. And at the time, I certainly did. The funny thing about this game, when I first got it, first got this, and that was what spurred me to get a GameCube, as I mentioned in Episode 1. I got the GameCube deal because it was sort of at the GameCube's end of the life cycle, nearing that time, I think uh, maybe 2005, 2004, I'm not so sure. But it came with Mario Kart Double Dash, I got Pokemon Coliseum separately, and being a GBA junkie for that time and not knowing any other gaming experience but that, I didn't expect it not to save on the system or on the disc itself. I had no concept or knowledge of memory cards, so when I first got my games, Mario Kart worked fine. I didn't notice that Double Dash wasn't saving my progress because I was just having casual races and saying, oh look, there's Mario, and wow, Donkey Kong, and look at these graphics, it was mind-boggling. And it actually got my entire family into gaming, believe it or not, but that's another story for another day. With Colosseum, however, I noticed. And when I went to dinner and then came back and my game was not saved, I was heartbroken. Much like this trainer here, Botan! Botan from Yu Yu Hakusho, what? Botan, uh, yes, but no. I was heartbroken that my save was not saved, and that I needed some other peripheral device before I could do it. And back in those days, it's like these days, I still can't drive, but back then I couldn't even ride my bike anywhere, because I was two Taeyungs. So, I couldn't get a GameCube memory card right away, but I still played it anyway. I think I played up to Pyrite City and did all this stuff, and if you see what we have to do and you think it's ridiculous that I played this maybe five times without the memory card, uh, each having to restart it, then yes, that is where the Pokemania started. It starts off young, starts off with cute, cuddly, colorful characters and cards and things to collect, but then, ho oh, ho, every game after that that gets better and better and better. That's where they get you. And you can see the theme to this gym, it's a mix. Which is good because us having an unorthodox team here, it's nice not to just take on, oh, say, a bug type gym because we might be demolished if Phoenix City decided we're gonna do all Wurmples and Silcones and we're gonna make sure they all have a bug bite or bug type move because that would mess up both Psychic and Dark types. Yes, I mentioned that Umbreon is super effectively hit by bug types last time, but also 
Is Espeon hit too by bug types? Yes, indeed, it is. Very harshly. But in this battle, we want to make sure that our one shadow Pokemon, Quillava, stays out of harm's way. And you'll notice this game not only being very balanced because you have a strict limit to how many Pokemon you could have on your team at a time. You can't just wander into the wilds and form a team of six, even if it is six weak Pokemon, just to have Death Fodder. If you don't find Shadows, you don't have much firepower on your team. So, I know a strategy for some people would be to go to Pyrite and skip Justy's Gym at first. And that makes sense, but I do want to get some extra experience before we head into the new City of Thugs, because I don't know what there is to expect. I don't remember where all the Shadow Pokemon may be hiding, and what uh, Mirror B may be plotting in that town. I do not know, and I want to come packing prepared with experience points. But it's balanced because even if you choose whatever of the evolved starters of the Shadow type from Roso Verde or Blue Dude, you're going to have to take on every member in this gym if you want to get to Justy eventually. The one caveat, and why people may think to go to Pyrite first and instead of this gym, is that once we get to Justy, she will not face us until we have a team of six. That's where the limitations come in, and that will be the end of our Phoenix City adventures for sure. But in the meantime, I do love making these trainers cry. No, no, that's that's horrible. That's that's awful. That's nah, it's pretty fun actually. <laughs> you know, stealing Pokemon all day from unsuspecting thugs and villains and a shady town and a wasteland of a desert, only to make pseudo gym trainers cry because they think they're special. They're in a in posh clothing in a nice well lit arena sparkling water on the side they think that they can be a Pokemon gym no no I love doing this I love making little kids cry I'm just kidding you know I'm I'm getting into character for when we do come across that Nazcore fella I have a, a frightening feeling about him just anticipating here but I think there are going to be some crazy villains coming up definitely in Pyrite then who knows? Maybe I'm not right. Maybe it's all hype. Maybe Phoenix City is jealous because Pyrite installed two fountains. Oh, ho, ho, two. Count them, two fountains and a coliseum in their town. I just don't know. So this guy, we went from water. Now we're facing a ground trainer. And that's grand. Shadow Rush. Now we get to test out our shadow Pokemon as well. Aside from earning ourselves experience points, you'll notice that Shadow Pokemon don't have a level up experience bar that's typical. Wow, that was a crazy move. Everything looks amazing in 3D. Even annoying little sand tomb moves. But Quillava's bar of purple is its shadow meter. And what we have to do, instead of filling that bar up like we would any old experience bar, what we have to do for that is deplete that purple bar. Deplete it so that there's no more purple left. And that's done by traveling and walking around with the Pokemon, battling with them, calling them when they enter a state called Hyper Mode, which we will see eventually, I'm sure. Hopefully, because once the Shadow Pokemon enters Hyper Mode, that will take a big chunk of their Shadowy Heart lock away. And that's ideally what we're trying to do. I'm not so sure how we can purify the Pokemon yet, but if Chi says she remembers that, that she recalls from her childhood somebody talking about the locks on Pokemon's hearts, perhaps there is a way to be a Master Lock pick in the Wastelands. Raise our purification powers through battle, through walking, and other methods. Surprisingly, for some Pokemon, walking is the best. When it comes to the mass purification we'll be doing later on in this series, that I plan to be doing, that's when I'll bring about the whole correlation of Pokemon natures and what method is best for purifying the Pokemon. So if you're watching along and playing, maybe you'll want to wait and watch a little further in to see which Pokemon are best to do what and what method to purify them faster. 
Just have to let them know that we care. Have to let them know they're in good hands, even though they were stolen from a trainer who probably stole them from another trainer. Maybe this was what Silver was working towards. Oh man, imagine that. What a, what a plot twist that would all be. If Silver from the second gen, who stole his original starter from Elm, happened to go back to Elm's office, steal more Johto starters, and bring them to Mirror B, which then was dispensed to Rozo Verde, Blue Dude, and now we're at this point, where we're reclaiming the territory. Maybe this is all Silver's doing, and this is why this game happened. I would believe it. Too sophisticated. Get out of here. Too sophisticated. How about too noobish? Too noobish for me. Well, what do you think? Whoa, that was inspiring. You showed me a great battle. It deserves a gift. I want to give you this. The White Herb. You don't have a full party of Pokemon yet. When you get six, I'd like to battle you. And that's as far as we can go in Justy's Gym. Are you a man? Are you a woman? Once again, I do not know. Your polygons do not tell me. But maybe the comments will. See you next time in Pyrite City.